Yeah. Uh, so hello everyone. I'm very glad to be here. Uh, so this is Dr. Minotri Abraham. I just completed my PhD from Indian Institute of Technology Indore in India. And recently, like in October, I moved to Germany to join as Humboldt Fellow in uh, RWTH Aachen University. Uh, so from December, my affiliation will be RWTH Aachen in Germany. So currently I'm doing my German uh, language course sponsored by the Humboldt Foundation. I am really grateful for the foundation. Also, but the work uh, currently I'm presenting is uh, a part of a project which has been carried out by uh, my PhD supervisor, Professor Nilema Satya from IIT Indore uh, with the financial support from DST India. So the paper is authored by myself uh, and my supervisors, Dr. Nilema Satya and Dr. Bishwadeep Pradhan from UTS Sydney. Uh, along with us, we had our collaborators from Italy, Dr. Samuel Zagoni, and from Saudi Arabia, Dr. Abdullah Alamri. So all of us uh, uh, have worked on this project, and this has been the project principal investigator was my supervisor, uh, Professor Nilema Satyam, and I would uh, sincerely like to thank her uh, for letting me work on this project. This was a very interesting project, which I did apart from my PhD thesis. So uh, we worked on this particular location since 2016. So this is where it is. Uh, I hope all of you know where India is. So uh, Darjeeling Himalayas is a small part uh, in the northeastern part of uh, uh, India. And like we did the study in a very small town, Kalimpo. Uh, so as you can see over here, it's the northeastern part of India, the part of Himalayas. So. Yeah, so this is the town, its name, its uh, name is Kalingpong. It is part of the Kalingpong district in the state of West Bengal in India. So as you can see here, the, this, the town itself has a big, uh, rich like uh, topography. So here is a ridge and it is sloping towards both sides. So on one side, it is draining towards the river Tista and on the other side, it is draining towards the river Delhi. So here we have, we can see that a lot of drainage parts are there. And on this side towards Tista, it is a very highly rugged mountains and the slope is very steep. And on the other side, we have a gentler, sleep, a, a gentler slope. So we uh, found like uh, after uh, a lot of field investigations and everything with my supervisor uh, and an NGO who was working there, Save the Hills. So they also helped that with the field investigation. So after uh, investigations in 2016 and 17, we have found that uh, this region, the Shibo Pasho region, as you can see over here also the photographs, uh, this region was highly affected and every year uh, minor slides and major slides, um, landslides were happening in this particular region. So this is basically the system of Joras, that's what they call the mountain rivulets. So this is how the system of drainage works in Kalingpo from the ridge towards both the sides. And uh, we could see failures varying from minor cracks in the roads uh, to uh, debris flows in this particular region. Uh, so uh, after understanding this, uh, we first uh, inquired the triggering factor for landslides. So in 2011, there was a Sikkim uh, earthquake and there were many uh, landslides which got triggered due to earthquake. But most of the landslides happens during monsoon season and the uh, rainfall is identified as the major triggering factor for the occurrence of landslides in this particular region. So when we identified a rainfall as the primary triggering factor, the first thing that we uh, tried was to uh, understand the rainfall threshold conditions, which will trigger uh, the occurrence of landslides in the region. So we started from the basic uh, traditional ID thresholds. Uh, so, but we do not know which threshold will be suitable for this particular region. This is a very important question to be addressed. Um, so, and what we did is like we adopted different uh, approaches like the ID threshold, the ID threshold, the probabilistic approach, uh, and the um, hydrometeorological ap approaches. And then we compare different models to identify which is the best performing model. So that is the first approach in this case, the rainfall thresholds. Then we installed six sensors. You can see in the previous slide that uh, you can see these dots over here. This is a system of sensors, which we have six numbers uh, that are installed very near to two mountain rivulets. 
which will monitor the tilt rates and the volumetric moisture content of these particular locations. So uh, this is the second phase. And then what we did is like we found that both these methods had some uh, flows, technical flows, when they are very used individually. Then we combined both of them using an algorithm-based approach to uh, get a better performance. So uh, the first uh, approach in this was, as I told you, the rainfall thresholds, and the first conventional ID thresholds. We know that ID thresholds uh, is plotted on a uh, a logarithm scale as in the rainfall intensity versus duration. And again, we know that uh, this was used since after the pioneering work of Kane in 1980. But uh, re the recent works, they focus on more on the ED thresholds because intensity is again defined as a function of duration. And the interdependability of the uh, variables is not a good thing to when we uh, explain something mathematically. So uh, that's why we are now work uh, going towards the event process duration thresholds. So these are the threshold equations derived for Kalingpong, ID and ED. Actually, both of these are interchangeable, uh, easily interchangeable. And uh, there is a relation also between uh, these two variables because intensity is defined as the ratio of event and duration of rainfall. So we had these thresholds initially. But we found that these thresholds were uh, issuing a lot of false alarms. They were very conservative, but uh, the number of false alarms, if they are too high, we know that uh, we are going for a forecasting system and people should trust on the warnings we issue. So if, if we issue a lot of false alarms, um, the reliability or the trustworthiness of our model is under question. So we should uh, uh, find a way to control these false alarms. So that is how we uh, went with Sigma model. Uh, so Sigma is already in uh, operation in Italy. Uh, so uh, we followed the uh, articles published by Martelloni et al. in 2012 and later. So uh, uh, adopting the methodology used for Italy, we uh, customized the model for uh, targeting Himalayas uh, by using the data, the rainfall data from 2010 to 2015. And then we validated the model with the and rainfall data since 2015 and 2017. So in Sigma, what we do is like as the name indicates, it is related to the standard deviation of the rainfall data. So we actually compare the uh, rainfall on the day of occurrence of landslide or the based on the forecasting. Uh, is it uh, is it actually varying from the standard deviation that we have observed so far? How many how much times it is varying uh, from the data that we have observed so far? So we consider both short-term rainfall and long-term rainfall, and we assume that the data follows a, a, a cumulative distribution, which is uh, of similar to the Gaussian function. So uh, this is how we have uh, approached the sigma for cutting off, and this is the distributional algorithm we use for sigma. Uh, so how this works, we have two different set of uh, vectors, which is uh, initially based on the first three days, and then from four to 63 days. So this 63 was customized for Kalimpong. We can, uh, like when we did the same work for uh, South Indian uh, districts like Idki and Bainat, uh, the uh, number there much lesser, like 30, 25, like that. So this number can also be customized based on the uh, regional specific data. So here we have a different thresholds, which is related to the standard deviation of the data. Uh, and these are also customized specifically for a region. And the algorithm is also customized for largely humanness. So when we check first, we first, if the vector, the short-term rainfall vector is greater than 2.5 times sigma, so we issue a red alert. If it is not, we check if it is greater than 2.05 times sigma. If it is yes, we issue an orange alert. If both conditions are not satisfied, we check if it is greater than 1.65 sigma. If yes, then yellow alert. If that is also not there, we check for the uh, long-term rainfall condition. If it is greater than 1.95 sigma, then also we have to issue an yellow alert. If there is uh, this, none of these conditions are satisfied, we have a green alert, which is which means that there is no warning. So if there is red alert, we expect landslides. Orange alert also we expect landslides. Yellow alert is like uh, we have to watch the situation. That is the meaning of yellow alert. But still in the study. 
uh, we have considered yellow alert also as a positive warning because uh, we are actually trying to minimize the warning to the best possible extent. So this is how the sigma curves are plotted initially. Uh, then again, to control the false alarms, we have adopted a procedure of optimization. So uh, this 1.5 sigma, it will be that the threshold will be raised very slowly so that the false uh, no alarms are missed. So what happens in in that process? All the false alarm will get uh, removed without losing any true alarms. So uh, this has been verified using a confusion matrix that you see over here. Uh, so this confusion matrix is uh, the normal standard confusion matrix. We call true positives and both uh, the prediction is correct uh, with a landslide, and we call true negative and the prediction is correct without a landslide. And when there is a landslide prediction, but there is no landslide happen, uh, that is a false positive. And the landslide happens without an alert, it is called a false negative. So we do not want false negatives and false positive. Uh, false negative is a very critical case because we are not supposed to miss any event that is not critical, but we cannot be too conservative at the same time. So we compared all the models for the year 2000. Uh, 16 and 17 and then we understood that sigma has a very good performance with uh, like very high value efficiency and likelihood ratio when combined with both ed and id threshold and we can see that the number of true positives has increased and the number of false positives has reduced considerably by using sigma uh, yet sigma also has a number of false positive 55 which is not a good number we still have to reduce that so here comes our monitoring system. We have six uh, sensors installed, as I have uh, told you, in the Shibo region, which is closer to two uh, rivulets. Three sensors are installed near Pyaria de Jora, and uh, uh, three are installed near Osi Jora of Shibo region. So we have a data logger system. The six sensors, they will transfer the data first to the data logger, uh, and this will be transferred uh, to the server we are having in our laboratory. So uh, we will be getting the data for every 10 minutes for both filtrate and biometric moisture content data. Uh, so we were monitoring this slope since 2017, and we have data till 2020 was used for this particular study. This was published in October 2020. So, um, uh, so we had displacements every month, soon, and uh, we found that the displacement rate, whenever this, uh, there are actual dis field displacements in the field, the tilt rates are also going very high, but there were some tilt rates which are not associated with the slope uh, failure as well. These were uh, from external disturbances, some uh, vehicular movements, or some animal disturbances like that. So uh, we found that uh, tilt rates are corresponding to the country's placement, then, but still there are some false alerts which are not related to slope points. So we found that the slope movements are always associated with rainfall and uh, tilt rates. So if you combine both these methods, you could avoid a lot of false alerts. So uh, the first location where tilt sensors one, two, and three were there near Pyaria and Ijora was found to be more severe, experiencing more severe slope failures than the other one. So we proceeded with the study um, with these three sensors. And what we did is like we first uh, have the thresholds, the ED and ID thresholds. So we check if the threshold line with the 5% expense probability is crossed or not. So if this is crossed, then we check the tilting rate. If this is also crossed, exceeding a threshold limit, then we issue an alert. But if the rainfall is crossed, but there is no tilting rate, then we have an attention. Uh, and again, there are some uh, situations where today there is no rainfall, but it was raining continuously for the past two, three days. And due to antecedent soil moisture conditions, the soil is still wet. And then uh, there is uh, a minus light or displacements that is being seen in the soil. So to, to consider this aspect, we check if any rain has happened less within a lag time. So for the calling form, we took this lag time as 72 hours after a lot of calibrations. So this value should be calibrated particularly for every region. And if that is all uh, crossed, uh, then we check the tilt rate threshold. If that is crossed, again, alert. And if both there is no rainfall, then there is rainfall within the lap time, then there is no warning. And 
there was rainfall uh, which exceeding the threshold limit within the lag time but the till rates are not exceeded so we have to be on an attention so this way we can control the false alert issued by uh, the rainfall thresholds because we have the controlling factor over there the tilt rates and at the same time the tilt the change in tilting which are not associated with rainfall it is not considered for issuing an alert so uh, when we uh, optimized this uh, we could uh, understand that uh, the false alerts were controlled to a very large extent as you can see from this graph over here and the likelihood ratio and the efficiency of the model also got increased so with this understanding that the when we integrated it with the idea and ad uh, thresholds the performance got improved so we understood that why won't we integrate this with sigma model so in sigma model the most of the false alerts we were getting were an yellow alert so we added this particular control parameter to the yellow alert case that the yellow alert will be issued only if the tilting rate is also exceeded the threshold so all the parameters that we see uh, that we saw in the previous slides sigma model were recalibrated using the data till to take the 18 and so you can see that the threshold values have been changed and then we compared it with all the models and we can see that when we recalibrated sigma it, it, it itself in, improved the performance at all uh but uh the sigma plus till is the best performance among all the models so uh, this is how uh, we have uh, understood that sigma plus tilt could be used in an operational launch and early warning system with a reliable number of uh, false alerts and uh, yeah with, with a very limited number of false alerts but a very reliable number of true predictions Uh, so from the analysis started in 2016 and this study was published in 2020 so the continuous four years uh, since 2017 july of monitoring observations so we understood that the rainfall thresholds we have uh, derived we always have derived multiple thresholds for any region to understand which model will be performing better for the region because we did this for kalimpong and we found that it was performing better But when we did the study for Kerala, like for the DKY and for the thesis, my thesis, we found that the probabilistic analysis was even performing better than Sigma model. So uh, the uh, we do not know which model will be best suited for any um, particular site. So we should always uh, follow this procedure that we adopt multiple thresholds and always take the best suited model. So, but this was issuing a lot of false alarms, and then we had uh, the monitoring system. Uh, uh, and this was the uh, first ever successful one of the uh, very first installations that we had in India, mm, uh, and uh, we are still working on. And uh, my supervisor, Professor Neelima, she is uh, has more more projects. She is now working on Uttarakhand for both uh, like seismic and rainfall induced landslides, and uh, we are on to more projects on the field monitoring based projects. Uh, and the uh, tilt rates were easily correlatable with observed displacements in the field. and we understood that anderson rainfall play a very key role in the stability of slope and but the tilt is often influenced by the anthropogenic factors and there are higher false alarms due to this so we combine both the methods and uh, these are algorithm based methods we use some decisional algorithms to decide to take the inputs from both the methods and to control the number of false alerts and uh, control the number of false alerts so when we the what we understood from the analysis is like when we combine both it overcomes the limitations of both when used it when they are used individually and the combined approach using sigma and the monitoring gives the best performance and all the models and uh, this can be used as a part of lws uh, in kalimpong so we have done only the forecasting part uh, so now we are in the process of uh, converting this to uh, the, the other part of aws like monitoring as we know it's only one part of an early warning system and so we are almost ready with the prototype uh, forecasting model which we are now trying to develop to an operational forecasting model for okay uh, so these are the acknowledgments first of all the support of the dst should be acknowledged and the save the health ngo and i would like to support thank uh, my supervisor also for this Uh, for letting me work on this project, mm, it was indeed a great experience for me. Yeah, and just the publications from this project. Yeah, thank you.